Uh, good morning. Uh, welcome to uh, Sahitya Academy's uh, Webline Literature Series. And uh, today's uh, program is in English language. Today we are going to discuss pandemic and literature. Um, not only in the West, but even in India, uh, we have plenty of literature uh, related to pandemic. Whether we take uh, Tagore's uh, long poem, Puratan Britya, uh, or uh, Sarat Chandra's stories, or Ahmad Ali's novel, Twilight in India, or Tagani Sivasankar Pillai Down South in Toti Ode Magan. So we have uh, plenty of stories, poems, novels related to pandemics and epidemics. Uh, literature, actually, you know, that uh, when I think, when we think of it, um, I would like to, before, even before we, we all uh, um, uh, faced this kind of uh, extended lockdowns, Arish Trivedi uh, wrote that uh, literature does become a source of consolation, a way of sharing our common humanist concerns. And in, uh, in its own way, literature does provide the deepest and most insightful record of events. Uh, but uh, beyond all these things, is there uh, anything, um, you know, uh, there are any kind of a deep reasons for writers to write a fiction or poetry about a pandemic or an epidemic? What does it mean for a writer to uh, go for this kind of a theme, topic? So we have very distinguished uh, panelists here today to discuss this topic. First uh, of the panelists is uh, Dr. Paramita Satpati. She's uh, one of the influential voices in the modern Odia literature. And she actively writes in Odia and English. She has uh, 14 books of short stories, uh, three novels, a, a collection of poetry. Uh, apart from translations in English and different languages to her print. She received Sahitya Academy Award in 2016 uh, for her collection of short stories, Property, A Boundless Moment. At present, she is working as uh, Principal Commissioner of Income Tax in Delhi. It's a pleasure to have you, ma'am. Good morning to all of you. Yeah, good morning, good morning. Good morning. So welcome to the show, ma'am. And um, next, uh, next panelist, uh, Dr. Kumi Vavayana. Uh, with two PhDs to her credit and one in literature and other education. Uh, she worked as a head department of English University of Bombay and she retired in 2016 and she is a creative writer, an education futurist, a TEDx speaker, an internationally acclaimed educator, literary critic and storyteller. Uh, some of her TEDx talks are uh, actually the really most famous ones. So it's great to have you here, ma'am. With us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, yeah, our next panelist is uh, Kripa. Kripa is a writer and editor from Madras, and uh, she's author of Rivers Remember, uh, one of the most significant uh, books you will ever come across when it comes to chronicling of a natural event. And it's a, non, a narrative non fiction account of Chennai floods of 2015. Her reportage and cultural writings have appeared in the Hindu, First Post, New Indian Express among other publications for more than a decade. So um, it's a great to see you, Kripa. Thanks for joining the show. Yeah. Thank you so much. So we will uh, so begin with you, Dr. Paramita. Um, so what do you think? You, you, if, if, if I'm not wrong, you also have written a poem or a few poems about pandemic, correct? So what made, yes, you, yes, what yes. made you go for that? Uh, well, Rajbhavan, pandemic is a very, very rare occurrence in the history or in the fate of uh, human uh, race or in the world. You know, whenever it occurs, it shakes and shatters a lot of things in, our, in human life, living the way world order and the way world goes on. So it is, it affects so deeply. Uh, affects everybody in such a deep way that uh, it ushers all the thinkers, writers, people who can express themselves in 
just um, during pandemic, is, uh, I mean, it is a you know, rare experience for us, good or bad, whatever, because, you know, uh, the um, other pandemic was in 1918 to 20, that is like SARS, uh, swine flu and birds flu, they kept on happening, dengue, but it has not affected the world in such a way. So here we have come across such cruelest of scenes, the kindest of acts, the you know magics and the miracles happening to people and the sharks you know the sharks that mankind can never forget all through their lifetime so these are certain very strange and you know kind of events which have probably no uh, human race could have ever imagined or hoped uh, you we generally think that there could be a famine there could be a fraud, there could be an earthquake for that matter but pandemic of this nature the I don't think we have this in the world's history, the way it affected us. And it's very natural that people who are uh, sensitive, people who can express in whichever way, will naturally try to express their agonies and their um, this greatest of human tries with destiny. If you can give me one more minute to talk about me. Well, I have tried to write a few poems, maybe a story, but I have been every night, I think that I'll be writing something uh, you know, long and evocative, but you know, in the morning, I cannot just make myself ready to sit down and um, uh, hold the pen and paper because I am so much into it and so much going through the experience with all of us so that I and I cannot distance myself from this kind of fun happening at the, at the moment. So I believe that maybe um, so we are all hopeful that this uh, time will pass and after this probably I'll start writing my piece with my experiences and all the other experiences that I have uh, gathered all through the time. Thank okay. you. Shar sharing of the experiences. Okay, uh, Dr. Kumi, you have been giving, uh, you've been giving lectures and uh, doing webinars on this. Uh, so what is your take on this? Why do people, is it beyond uh, something beyond sharing uh, of their own experiences? Sure. Um, I, I would, I believe that everything human concerns every artist, and that includes the literary writer, the human condition. The pandemic writers are doing three very, very vital things, I think. Though, as Paramita rightly said, at present, we don't have the luxury of distance. We are completely in it at the moment. And yet, like other writers, pandemic writers are doing three very important things. The first is they are functioning as cultural historians, really helping us to understand the sociological conditions and try and make sense of this meaningless situation. They will be helping later readers remember, and I break up the word remember, bring back to together all the different elements to try and understand things better. So as cultural historians who are mapping what is currently happening, secondly, a lot of social criticism. And I think that one of the major functions of a writer is to be a social critic, not to be an entertainer or just be concerned about nokri and chokri, but much more. Neither does the literary writer merely have to pander to the dominant narratives in the nation. So looking at it very critically, revealing an incredulity towards the meta-narratives, looking at all the social justice issues which have suddenly come up, critiquing them, trying to understand them. So I think a lot of writers are trying to do that kind of thing. And I think this has been happening even in the past, even by writers who've been writing dystopias, apart from pandemic literature. They make us really look at the society in which we are living and realize what I call the insanity of our sane lives. I think all of us today agree that we don't want to go back to the normal because that was not normal. The third important thing that these pandemic writers seem to be doing is also in some way giving us some kind of narrative for the future. I mean, these are things which have gone wrong. These are things which we could 
modify, change in order to have a socially just society and to make this world a better place for all the generations to come. So in my view, these three things are happening simultaneously. Okay. Um, thank you, ma'am. So Kripa, when you wrote Reverse Remember, okay, so when or somebody who writes now, when you're either, there are two things. One is you're trying to write during an epidemic or pandemic or writing after that both may have uh, have a kind of apocalyptic feeling for the person who is trying to record it right. um it's actually quite quite surreal for me because i i finished my book on the floods and then the uh, my book came out around the time when a severe drought hit chennai and um, uh, it's it's been a year, and after the drought, now we are sitting in the middle of a pandemic. So, it's been um, it feels like uh, you know, ma'am was saying it feels extremely like we are in the times of abnormal, and uh, you know, among the things, actually, the greatest thing that writing this book gave me was uh, the association of writers who are working in uh, climate change. Um, and I think there is actually something to take away for writers everywhere from how writers who work on climate change help each other and help get the voice out. Uh, and there is, it was astounding for me that people from all over the world were writing to me. And I had written about a flood in Madras and I thought, who's going to read this book? And people from all over the world were writing to me and saying, this is such a universal thing now. There are floods everywhere. And I can imagine this being translated to the idea of a pandemic as well now because this is a much more universal experience than a flood was. So I, I'm seeing a lot of parallels between the narratives of uh, you know, climate change and the narrative of uh, the pandemic. And uh, like you said, the sense of the feeling of being overwhelmed uh, you know, as a writer, especially when you're immersed in it and then you're trying to revisit that experience and I wrote my book over four years and every time I would hear I would go to a victim's house and come back I would be shaken and then I would have to write about it and you're in that space and I think that is going to happen when we are right now still in the middle of it and I think writers do put themselves through a lot of emotional turmoil while writing it and uh, I was reading a research that said the other day that writers are most likely to be uh, depressed because uh, of the kind of profession it is. It's a lonely affair. You have to uh, put yourself in the skin of another human being and you're also doing some form of self-flagellation when you're right, pointing out the society's mistakes because you're also part of that system. Especially those of us who write in English in India, uh, we do feel a sense of, I don't know, from somewhere that sense of guilt is there because we are part of a system that we are critiquing. So um, I think it's going to be, uh, I think some wonderful things are going to come out of this, but I think writers are also going to be grappling with uh, some real existential questions even more than we have in the past. And, and that experience I had in the writing of Floods, that experience I'm having now as I'm working on a book um, um, that kind of weaves in the themes of caste and uh, social equity and, and, and all of that. And uh, writing about something like this involves taking into account the massive inequality we are seeing, we are seeing today. And uh, I hope that you know, we'll see some new voices, voices from the margins who will capture this experience and that we can uplift them as well. Okay, uh, that's a very important point. I want to go back to Paramita Satpati, but before that, very quickly, Dr. Kumi, something is very important I would like to ask you. Uh, that, uh, you are into education. The amount of literature on the system itself, the society, various communities, uh, all of them are trying to readjust the base of learning and education. This is also part of, it's a kind of a reaction to, uh, by a society to uh, natural calamity. Okay, it's kind of pandemic and every community is reacting in its own way. Like, you know, for example, um, two days ago on uh, Twitter, I said there are, uh, in Patna, there are uh, nearly about um, 40,000 children, they do not have access to internet or mobiles. 
So how will they learn? So there is a teacher who put the um, um, gram of I mean amplifiers in every road, and he will go to temple or mosque. On top of that, he will sit and then he will take classes. And they, they, you know, all the teachers will go from different places. They, I mean, everybody is trying to innovate and trying to do this. So I mean, um, maybe it is a kind of a, this. This is a very important uh, piece of recording. I feel. It's a, it's a moment of self-reflection. For so long, we've been talking about a change in education, but the change has always still emphasized teaching rather than learning. And now suddenly, learning has become extremely important. As you rightly said, the digital medium does not work for everyone because in underprivileged homes, there would be one mobile or one electronic gadget in the family and children in different classes and the parents could not possibly be sharing it. Even those who have a mobile each for each of the children, they find this a tremendous strain. The entire approach to education, what the content should be, all of this needs serious thinking and complete overhauling, according to me. Overhauling of the content, curriculum design, learning outcomes, teaching pedagogy, and most importantly, assessment. So as Einstein said, we can't keep on thinking of solutions using the same paradigm. We have to shift the paradigm completely and start thinking in an entirely different way. And given the current scenario, I would say that in privileged homes, children could learn according to their timings, but the pressure is tremendous on the teachers and the teaching community. I, I know that health workers are at the forefront and they are applauded. I think teachers also need to be applauded because literally within three or four days, teachers have had to adapt to an entirely different way of teaching. So everything is in a state of flux, but it has jolted the education system. We know that this our online teaching can't go on forever. When it comes to teaching learning, it is a completely different scenario. The teacher's presence is vital, but not the teacher who thinks of herself as stage, stage on stage, but as a guide on the side. So everything there will need to be radically rethought. Okay. So, I mean, that's, yeah, that's also one of the points which Kripa raised and uh, we are, this pandemic has brought out inequality, the massive inequality to the focus. Okay. Now, um, Paramita ji, what uh, Kripa was talking about and her feelings and when you also talked about sharing of this experience. How do you think as a writer, as a creative writer, as a poet, fiction writer, how do you think the, um, the reader, how reader will be able to uh, like Kripostelling, she, she, she was shaken. And the same way, that same feelings, you are also telling that uh, um, your reaction to what is going on, how do you think uh, this uh, readers, uh, it will help readers? I mean, will it not frighten them more? Uh, well, Rasmoon, we have uh, till now been talking how uh, this catastrophe, you know, if you at all tell um, uh, this, uh, I mean, assign the catastrophic uh, because that destiny and overpowering kind, kind of uh, thing that is happening and everybody is uh, at their wits end but even if we think that these things are you know everyday people are dying uh, the disease is uh, you know people getting affected is rising there's a shattering of human lives i mean all those things we have thought of dreamt of uh, thought of doing everything is done, gone people are the socially um, sociologically emotionally economically psychologically people are devastated but one great thing about uh, there is hope. there is hope and expectation that we'll come out of this we'll come out of this triumphant we'll come out of it uh, victorious and this will subside and we'll again go back to our uh, own kind of life and that is where a uh, writer or an artist connects with the readers the other sense that the readers understand what the is that right now 
I mean, they might be having more uh, clearer, clearer experiences or more bizarre kind of experiences than what we might do. Very, very strange, much strange than what fiction contains few small boys. But at some point, they can identify what has happened to them and. But still, at some point, they can identify what has happened to them and what has happened to uh, what must have happened to the whole mankind. But they have to be, maybe the body is immortal, but the spirit is immortal, and our gene humanity will over the what has got driven or virus or whatever. So that is something where a reader connects with the writers. Um, uh, both on the economic and uh, emotional level, psychological, they go through the they go through the same experiences which we uh, write about. That is what uh, probably. Okay, uh, Kripa, that um, uh, may, this uh, yeah, so maybe the readers take this. Yeah. So uh, Kripa, that uh, uh, taking further to what uh, Ms. Paramita is telling. That uh, yeah yeah uh, is, uh, but, uh, this uh, thing is uh, okay for a time uh, okay now uh, why I'm coming back to you with uh, what uh, Ms. Paramita Satpati is telling is that you wrote your book okay now uh, Ms. Paramita Satpati is telling how readers I mean they all have universal experiences and they will be able to relate but uh, there are what about um, Kamu or uh, Anantamurti, they all wrote much, much after that. So, but the, every reader uh, in different languages, they, uh, they read something different. Their uh, understanding was different from that of like Fakir Mehran Senapati, where he wrote is something different from one like, for example, your book, which is written much, uh, published much after the flights. Okay. Uh, yet you are saying that uh, what Ms. Paramita Satpati is telling the readers is able to connect. So there is no um, sense of fear or something like that? I think uh, there is, all of us, uh, you know, in life have to come to terms with the fact that, you know, there is death around us and that there is, uh, you know, difficulties around us. And uh, one of the ways in which we are able to come to terms with it is through literature. And when a writer is able to write, um, I mean, from Shakespeare uh, to Gabriel Garcia Marquez to, uh, you know, Little Women, uh, you see the presence of a pandemic in universal, you know, they, they are, when, when Beth dies in Little Women of, uh, you know, Scarlet Fever, I think. I think yeah. she has Scarlet yeah, Fever. Yeah. Scarlet, yeah. And when she, went, when she goes to visit a family that is sort of like in isolation. And I was watching the new version of the movie and it feels so urgent right now. It feels, you can really relate to, because uh, the fact that one of the young sisters dies is, um, it, it's, uh, it's a way... I mean, it, it feels extremely personal that you, know, you feel like you've lost a girlfriend of yours. And to see that in a book that is from so many years ago in from some completely different part of the world. Um, and, and yet it's something that you can relate to today. Uh, you know, people have, I mean, it went viral that King Leo was written, uh, you know, when Shakespeare was in quarantine. Or, uh, you know, the a uh, lot of great literature has sort of done you know, dealt with this. And um, uh, so I feel like, you know, the, the reason that these things have become big possibly is because, uh, you know, they do confront the the fear head on. They, these things do happen to the characters and then others around them sort of are dealing with it and then they emerge through it successfully, like, uh, you know, Ma'am was saying. So I think... I think there is hope even in, um, uh, you know, coming to terms with something like this. That there, is, there is an element of hope. And I think even if a writer is writing without any hope, uh, that also possibly, uh, you, know, uh, you know, some existential writing uh, is also possibly needed. There are, because there are people who do feel like that. And then when they feel, read those books, they feel like, oh, okay, so I'm not the only one feeling this way. Uh, there's another writer, and that is also one of literature's main aims, 
to make you feel less alone in this big bad world uh, you know you feel like uh, you know this godless world or god is dead as they say uh, that is also one of literature's jobs and i think whether or not we offer hope or not if we write about it truthfully enough i think um, i think the readers do take solace uh, from what we write okay now kripa um, before going to ms parmita so just i just would like to um, uh, say that uh, you know that uh, uh, maybe a couple of months ago maybe one month ago that i i have written to hindu to bring out english uh, version or english translation of that interview the interview by uh, p rajnarayan see mm. that uh, you mentioned uh, you and dr kumi also mentioned about uh, the our our actions how led to this Uh, you have talked about climate change and uh, you see that um, he talked about uh, the in that interview he talks about uh, how uh, maybe not even 100 years ago when cholera came plague came even in 1968 how uh, there was no government there was no this kind of information tools were not available villages themselves um, acted on their own they created gram devatas that there happens in maharashtra very famous everywhere that every village created their own this mahamari they created especially you know because maharashtra has always been traditionally the first one to be affected we don't know I mean even I mean whichever our epidemic or call a pandemic you take and they created some kind of a gram devata and they prevented mixing of communities villages from villages so they created a, each village became an island and they prevented successfully community transmission have we lost this kind of a uh, uh, human uh, element component of tackling this yeah, may i just briefly <laughs> respond to uh, ms krupa please yeah 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 i think i have a very different take on existential literature and absurd literature it is apparently without hope it's talking about desolation and the absurdity of our lives but i sincerely feel that people without hope do not write when a person writes it is to say look guys this is how bad things are but they needn't remain that way ts eliot's wasteland game of chess what will we do tomorrow what will we ever do and then you have this amazing wasteland or the first sentence of waiting for godo nothing to be done at present it feels like nothing to be done but in the second act of the play the trees do sprout leaves so the writers are insinuating that this is how bad things are but it is within our power dependent on the choices we make in life we can change things this is my take on it yeah 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 so kripa first you respond to all my question yeah. and then we'll go to parmita satpa yeah um i think you brought out something extremely pertinent because i've actually been reading up about uh, you know the local tamil deity called mariamman um she's actually um, perundevi has actually done uh, uh, she's done quite some research on uh, uh, you know the uh, the goddess and the connection to smallpox and chickenpox and i was reading one of her papers recently while researching uh, how community sort of reacted to the smallpox uh, and uh, you said right we do have uh, so so we have lost uh, some sort of um, um community response at a local sort of level um that sort of uh, that is sort of imaginative uh, that is uh, that brings in uh, an element that feels um, sort of spiritual but is also uh, but is also practical and uh, when writing as a practice is somewhat it comes from the unconscious and uh, you know it, you so writers can relate to these little traditions really well uh, for instance this uh, the idea of you know mariam and, and uh, so basically this is there in various cultures in india so when somebody gets a chicken pox you say the goddess has come to visit them and then you separate them and then you you know you have some uh, you know you say okay this is what is cooling this is how and then there are folk songs around it the songs and the 
folklore and the idea of the goddess these are all markers these are all ways to remember the fact that this happened and this could happen again and that you know so when you go back every year to do the uh, you know they offer poor kanji or whatever to the goddess you you remember all those who uh, you know maybe if you don't even if you don't actively remember it it is an act of remembering all of those who've been lost to like a small box or who've been lost to chicken box or uh, you know things like that so i i think uh, you know right now yeah in tamil nadu i feel like um, people are responding to it in villages and all if you see they are responding to it in the same kind of language uh, so you still see people walking around when i go for my grocery run i still see people uh, walking around with uh, you know some neem leaves the idea of a uh, neem and the idea of a, of a disease that can spread we see in tobo when and they come from this you know this cult of you know worshiping the mariamman she's also the goddess of rain and then she's also the goddess of chicken pox and small pox um maybe in a few years there will be you know uh, there will be a goddess who's meant to uh, you know one of these some some of these other uh, Uh, pandemics or communicable diseases maybe we will see them maybe we we'll no, 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 no it has already started it has already started i read a piece in marathi that maharashtra they already started why asked you came i said i will go to parmeshwar satpati is there first time i did uh, maybe 20 years ago i was doing research i saw i was very fascinated by this uh, i mean uh, deeply embedded into their life of odisha odia people but uh, today uh, madam Uh, when we go to odisha we don't see them anymore am i audible no 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 yes ha to what kind of people is it hello So, what we can you see? What we cannot see in Odisha anymore? No, no. That uh, they are like what this people are telling us. What, what I will refer to, and then the Gram Devatas. That are, you know, in Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Actually, we have plenty of that. What I'll tell you, uh, go to history of Odia literature or the writings that we had. Um, Odisha being a coastal area and uh, not so very uh, elite kind of people. I mean, some time back, so uh, we had uh, epidemics like cholera, chicken pox. tuberculosis and rampant and other uh, many other water bond diseases also so in in every uh, every village there will be some devi that uh, the um, she will be basically be, will be the um, savior for the whole village and there is some uh, you know um, ajan when the um, was uh, the culture for us as ajan when people get more educated more uh, um aware of um, science and uh, education probably this uh, generally goes out uh, out of the mind and it's not a bad thing either but i must tell you about pandemic uh, some time back i think a month back there was a big puja in rana temple do you know we have nursing yeah. nursing her birthday this yeah. model a nursing avatar you must know yeah. so they we have So, uh, if you have been to uh, Jagannath Temple, we have a big, huge. So, Nisya Ji was taken out, out with uh, by the pandas, by the Sevayats, who are not at all wearing uh, masks or gloves. They were all together, flocked together, and they said that Nisya Ji is going to save uh, the world, and we do not need any. um kind of a uh, no precaution in puri but i must tell you as mohan puri still in odisha odisha is still in uh, uh, as far as corona um, infections they have been uh, infected i mean lot many other regions are there but still puri has been one of the places which have least of infection they say that jagannath ji has been the person who had 
I mean, Jagannathji, the God who has saved them, and you must have heard how the Rathayatra was uh, taken yeah. up, the way 5,000 higher city, and they were all together. It's not that they have been, uh, you know, there was much of a social distancing now. So sometimes religion comes to play a lot of role in uh, giving uh, that solace and hope to a person, to the of a, kind of such kind of disaster which they know that there is no uh, cure immediately. Yeah. So I think, it's, I mean, it's a very fascinating uh, topic, but uh, unfortunately we are coming very close to the end of the program. And uh, I will start with Dr. Kumi. Quick thought on this. But basically, I think I agree with what Ma'am has just said. Um, one of the most frightening things about a pandemic or an epidemic. A pandemic is an epidemic with an international passport, like COVID. But one of the most terrifying things is that we can't really make sense of it because the enemy is not human. So yeah. that is one major issue. But then religion provides solace, writers provide a different vision, and artists are working towards, I think, making us realize that it requires a major modification in our thinking. With so much money being spent on our defenses, could we now siphon off a certain amount, at least, into really social welfare schemes? We are, we are grossly unprepared, and even the so-called affluent countries have proved to be grossly unprepared for this epidemic. So serious revamping, serious thinking, modification of our behavior. And I think one of the things that emerges from it is human resilience. The human spirit will fight it out, come what may. And in the final analysis, as Margaret Atwood very rightly says, love will be the truly subversive force. Love, not heterosexual love, but love in its various manifestations. And we see these acts of heroism and altruism all along. Yeah. That is my take. Yeah, that is that, uh, what you say. Is that my, yeah, that's correct. But uh, public, uh, without uh, public health, um, public economy is cannot exist. So what we are facing is uh, the complete lack of public health infrastructure. Uh, yeah, Ms. Paramita Satpati, a quick take, final thought. About what? Public today's, health? Today's, no, no, today, today's topic, pandemic and literature. Uh, yeah, Rasmoon, it has been very um, enlightening and revealing. And um, probably all the artists, basically, they have a point of feeling to express. And you have given us a, a, a platform of all three of us to vent out some of our feelings about it. We do, we are all affected by this uh, hazard, uh, hazard which has been cast by, um, on us um, by any, who, whoever we don't know. As, as uh, Krupaji had said correctly, we don't know who is the enemy, but we are fighting and we are hopeful that uh, something will come out in a form of a vaccination or something and we'll get out of it but in between the whole spectrum you know the spectrum of life the change the kind of uh, change in values change in attitude change in emotions change in psych psychological behavior all through will affect and be with us for a long time to come and here the artists uh, have a have their own take and a role that they I mean in different ways they will put it um, uh, across to the human society and that is what I believe uh, the only thing that we do in this kind of uh, situation at the yeah. moment. Yeah. 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 So in closing, I'd like to actually say that one of the questions you asked was actually uh, shockingly close to what I had been thinking about, which is about you know our grama devatas, and I feel like. Um, during the pandemic time like this, um, doing reading up or going back to the roots or, or looking up folk literature or uh, you know listening to the folk listening to folk music has actually given me a sense of feeling like because now you're no longer dependent on some outside writer uh, to tell to help you make sense of your own what you're dealing with. A folk song is so earthy and it's from your culture and it's like your ancestors speaking to you in your language and. That has sort of actually given me solace. And I hope that 
you know, more Indian writers writing in Indian language are recording this pandemic in, uh, you know, poetry or prose, uh, and that they will come back and embrace us in the future um, as well. And they'll, they'll be there as records for, uh, you know, for all of us. Yeah, there's something, all, I mean, all of you are mentioning, maybe I can uh, post this to Amito Ghosh. And uh, he was uh, he was really worried and warning us about uh, the flood of uh, pandemic literature. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, so th thank you very much, uh, Paramita Satpatiji, Dr. Pumi, and Kripa. Thank you thank very you. much for uh, participating, and it has been a wonderful discussion. And there are many things coming out of this discussion, and uh, maybe we can have more programs on each of these topics. Uh, like Ali, the literature is also. Uh, one is a uh, role of folk and the education literature during a pandemic and so on. So anyway, thank you very much. Thank you very much for doing thank this. You. Thank you. Thank and, you. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. And uh, the viewers are among the, around the world, please do keep watch, uh, keep watching Sahit Academy's program in all the 24 languages. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs>